thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's show. If, if, if my math is correct, I believe we are 18 days out from the Kentucky Derby. Um, I'm here with Ed DeRosa of Horse Racing Nation, Dan Cronin, Fat Ball Guy Racing, a.k.a. Keeneland Dan. I'm John Stetton. If For those of you that don't know it, uh, pass the wire. We're going to talk Kentucky Derby. Uh, I, I normally say it's a little early to talk Derby, but 18 days out, I think we're okay. Um, we pretty much know the field. Uh, we're going to run down some contenders, pretenders, and uh, talk some, you know, maybe some angles and some other stuff. And uh, I'm sure there'll be some good insight here on the show. Ed, welcome aboard. Thank Dan, you. Welcome aboard. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment. Right, gentlemen um i guess uh we'll start at uh number one on 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 the points list uh two-year-old champion uh points leader tough to knock forte checks a lot of boxes uh what do you gentlemen think we'll start with you ed what's what, what's your take on forte uh, he, he's done so little wrong that it's hard to deny that he is uh, a worthy favorite against this group. And he's by, even if maybe an underlay, if he ends up as light as five to two or three to one, he's a tough total toss for me. He's one of those that I'm going to have to gamble a little bit where if he runs well and hits the board. Then one of my longer shots is the ones that's going to have to be with him. If it comes Forte, practical move, who we'll get to next, I'm just going to have to lose. Like, that's, I'm not going to play it that way. But I like a horse like Skinner, should he get in enough, that if he runs well with Forte, I need to be able to, to do something on the race. So respect him a ton. Tough to see the value there as a top pick, so he won't be mine, but uh, by no means a toss. Your thoughts, Stan? I agree with what Ed said. I, I mean, he deserves to be the favorite. I, I'm just such a numbers guy that he doesn't tower over the field. He's not American Pharaoh over the field. Hmm. Um, but his numbers are good. You know, he's only had two starts, so that's good. He he should leap forward. Um, his rag number is really good. His buyer and Briz are good. Um, I just don't know with his running style – with the pace that I'm seeing, at least, um, I don't know. I, I he's you got to take him though. You, if you're betting pick fours and fives, you got to put him on your ticket. And like Ed said, in a try or a super, yeah, he's one of the keys. But you got to put him with longer shots. And I'm gonna put him. You know, Ed mentioned Skinner. Mine's two fills. Um, where I'm gonna have to have him with a a 10, 15 to one shot at least in the tries to, to have him I, i'm not gonna bet on him or anything nothing like that but but you can't toss him yeah i i i i've got no knock on him um i i always try and look for some kind of angle to justify taking a stand against any 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 favorite especially in a race like the derby and my only my only possible possible knock is that you know, may, may, maybe he doesn't go forward off that last race. He may, maybe, maybe had a run 
a little bit harder than than we all expected and dig in a little bit more than than we all expected. So, you know, maybe he's not sitting on a on a on a forward move. Um, or maybe he's the horse that falls into one of these categories. You know, one, there's a couple of certainties about the Derby. I always feel it's a it's a race that is 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 ultimately dependent upon, you know, pace and trip uh, more, more than anything else. There's always a very, very live figure horse that just doesn't fire. That's almost always a gimme. Uh, and there's always a horse that just gets a horrible, butchered, terrible luck trip. You, you know, <laughs> besides those two potential intangibles, Forte, I agree with you, gentlemen, is, is tough to knock, deserves to be the favorite, uh, certainly looks the part. When I, I was at the Fountain of Youth, um, I didn't go to the Florida Derby, but when, you know, for those that look at the horses in the paddock and form opinions based on that, he just absolutely outlooked the field in every way. If you were betting strictly on appearance, like, uh, you know, looking at two heavyweight fighters in the ring and, you know, how to pick one just based on that without knowing their records, then nobody, nobody would have would have gone against Forte. So, and, and he just got to Churchill Downs on on Monday, nineteen days before the Derby, and that was uh, a comment I heard from people who normally don't go on and on about that type of stuff, especially just getting off of a van. But uh, it just sounds like he looks the part, which is somewhat because. surprising because this ownership group paid a lot more for several other horses. Uh, at the sales, this one was just a hundred ten thousand dollar buy, but uh, he's he's certainly grown, grown up based on how everyone uh, speaks of his look. So uh, I think he'll be three to one, and you know, as we all said, we we all know why. Yeah. Um. One one, one last thought on him. That fountain of youth that I I went to. Um. I was looking to beat the traffic. It really wasn't that bad. So I actually watched the race from the far turn halfway in and halfway out of my car, just like kind of standing up at the far turn. So when they, they passed me over there, I was ready to hit the car and hit the traffic and beat everybody out. And I, I, I didn't get a chance till that night to watch the race on TV. And when they passed me on the far turn, turning for home, he was about third on the outside, still under wraps in a gallop. And I didn't even bother to watch the run down the stretch. I knew he was going to just run past. Now this was the the fountain of youth, not the Florida Derby. I'm like, this race is over. He's just going to, he, he's in a, in a gallop and he's going to inhale those horses. And they were already huffing and puffing. You can hear him. I got in the car, drove off and was not surprised at, 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 at the outcome. So um, we'll move on to number two, practic practical move who I find, I find just one of those racing I ironies in the fact that, Tim Yakteen might win the Derby <laughs> with a horse that he had and did not get from Bob Baffert in the whole, the whole transfer thing. So I think that's kind of, you know, ironic, but uh, we'll, we'll go to you, Dan. What's your, your take on, on practical move? His numbers make him fit. Um, but when I watch his races, he got the perfect trips twice, right? All he did was jog around the rail and they opened it up for him and he went through. And I thought the Santa Anita Derby, at least in my opinion, put him down on my list because he didn't run on. He should have run away from them horses. He should have won by two or three lengths. And instead he was life and death to win. And one more step, he wasn't going to win against the just a so-so field really. Um, I like Skinner out of that race, like Ed, more than I like practical move out of that race. Um, so to me, I'm not taking him. Um, you know, he's about fifth on my list, but I'm more of a pick four, pick five type guy, rolling double, Oaks Derby doubles, things like that. I'm not taking him in any of those. Just my opinion. You a believer, Ed, or? Yeah, no. I'm probably more toward Dan than would say I'd be a believer. The, the one thing I, I can't get away from in terms of price is if it did say Bob Baffert by his name, he might actually be the favorite in this race. I, uh, agree with that. I mean, he, he won the Santa Anita Derby. He's on a three race win streak, winning the types of races 
that Bob excelled at when he came here with some big time contenders, including the Los Al Futurity. So uh, that kind of sticks in my head, like, man, we're getting eight to one on a horse with the profile that would be seven to two if it were another Southern California trainer. Uh, the Knox for me, though, uh, I do have distance questions. Uh, practical joke, uh, I would even go so far as to say nine furlongs might be his limit, let alone 10. And that for me is sort of the, the variable that tips the scales where I'm, I'm not bullish on this horse. Uh, you know, there, there will be Pete. Dan this is something I got from Pete Dank, my former colleague at Thoroughbred Times. I'll definitely play scenarios where the Santa Anita Derby is just the best prep race and all those horses run well. I wish I had done that with the Ruby last year since I liked his the bomb. I did not. Uh, but, you know, if, if Skinner and or Mandarin Hero run well and Practical Hero runs well with them, I don't want to miss. Uh, but other than just saying the Santa Anita Derby is the best race and betting accordingly, I, I'm sort of with Dan. Uh, I just can't take the price, even recognizing that if it were a different trainer's name, this horse would be a lot shorter. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with every, everything you guys said. Um, uh, the, the one thing I differ with you on, Dan, is I like Mandarin Hero coming out of that race. I just visually liked the way he ran. Um, I thought he had some traffic trouble. I was disappointed that his points um, would not get him into the race. Uh, but one thing I did take notice of, and I, I have the same distance concerns about practical move that you guys have. I'm not, I'm not sure that a mile and a quarter is going to be what he's about or where he excels. But Ramon Vasquez said something very interesting in an interview on TV after the race. Um, so I'm, I, I don't remember who asked him or what network or what, you know, what broadcast it was on. But somebody asked him about, you know, why he didn't open up and why he seemed to have a hold of the horse. And he said, listen, um, we knew we were in the Derby and I was trying to educate him as much as I could. I was trying to get some dirt in his face. I was trying to teach him to re-break a little bit. I was trying to give him a little bit of, a, of an education. And I really respected his honesty in that answer. And I, I, I respected what he was trying to do. Uh, and that all may help, but it won't help a horse get a mile and a quarter who's not really ready to get a mile and a quarter. So, you know, it doesn't put me on his bandwagon. But an interesting note on practical move, if he does win and Blazing Sevens doesn't, then Chad Brown will have actually bred a Derby winner before he trained a Derby winner, which I think is another interesting tidbit this year. Because uh, I, I, I personally think there are, you know, possibly likely a couple of Derbies with Chad's name on them and he'll get to them eventually, but uh, he may actually breed one if practical move wins before he actually trains a winner, which brings us to Angel of Empire, which is, my nemesis in this race. So we'll go to we'll we'll go to you, Ed, and and, and we'll we'll see what you think of him. Uh, th this will be uh, the the first one I'm absolutely against that we've talked about. Uh, certainly, price playing a little role in that. I, I put up some projected lines in my fair odds, and had some people even suggest he might be shorter than practical move, which I don't see happening. Uh, you know, the, the West Coast money is is gonna come in on their horse as we see well, you got Coast brad money cox too. money too you got Br yeah brad no he will take money i just don't think he'll be that short but even at 10 12 14 to 1 just not for me uh the the, the brisnet speed rating out of the arkansas derby certainly fits with the rest rag is in wise though uh he is a little short flavian pratt uh that's some money that'll come too because he had a choice to make and he did choose this one over kings barnes and others I just think he'll have a lot to do. And when I look at horses that have this running style, we've already talked about Forte. We're going to get to tap at Trice. I'd much rather have either of them over Angel of Empire. Granted, at a shorter price, uh, I just don't think this one's going to see it out 10 furlongs with that move. Interesting. Uh, very curious on your take, Dan. Well, being a numbers guy again, like Ed just mentioned, he's light on numbers. He just is. He's only got one fig, and that's the Brisnet 101 that puts him anywhere near the top three or four. 
to me. Now, I think he'll get the distance. I just think he's going to be one of those that's coming from 16th that's going to have to weave into a just a moderate pace. And I like the other two closers better. I like the two Pletchers better closer-wise um, than this horse. I, I don't think much of the Arkansas Derby. I just didn't think it was much of a race. There wasn't much in there. You know, I'm a little, t- maybe the bottom of a trifecta or superfect, I could see him running third or fourth. I, I just don't see him anywhere near at the 16th or 8th pole of being able to win the race. So I, I won't use him in pick threes, pick fours, pick fives. Um, I won't use him at all in those in those bets. But, you know, in my tries and supers, I'll have him, you know, in the third, fourth spots. I think I think we should all or somebody should reach out to Brad and tell him that he's got to put us on the stake list if 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 Angel of Empire wins because <laughs> I said he was my nemesis because I thought I thought at least one or both of you guys were going to like him and I don't I'm with you I'm against him and and so many people like him I find it interesting that the three of us don't but so many people like him yeah. and I I. I've I've gone back to his PPs. I've watched his replays, and I'm like, you know, I can't get to him. I think Pratt made the wrong call. I can't get to him. But you know, if it was if I was Pratt's agent, I'm riding Kings Barnes all day long. Um, I said the same thing. You know, and and you so I, 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 you know, so we probably just help move him up about five lengths, I guess, <laughs> in, in the, way, the way horse racing works. So if he wins, I think Brad owes us a stake. Uh, but I, I, I feel the same as you guys. I, I, I think the Arkansas Derby was not up to some of the other, other races. I don't, I don't think he's as good as some of the other top, top horses. And I do see this year's race as not a mind that bird or rich strike um, type of scenario. I think the two or three major players are, you know, well, and John, to win with that kind of figure, a 94 buyer off of three starts since January one, I think is two out of the last 30 years. And they were both what you talked about the hundred dollar horses. So, I mean, if he was 50 to one, I price isn't right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I'll start with Tappet Trice. All uh, right. I like him a lot. You know, I, I, I've liked him since I watched the race that he won in New York before he head, head to, headed to, down south to Florida. Um, when I think Kendrick Carmouche rode him and I saw some fight in him. And I, I, like, I like, you know, intangibles, things that don't really show in the past performances. Um, I, I, you know, more, one of my notes on this horse was he's got some fight. Um, I think we saw that again in Tampa Bay, that last 16th, eighth of a mile, he really digs in and fights when they went to, um, the bluegrass, I said to myself, you know, he really doesn't have to win. He just has to run well. He's broke from the rail. A lot of people are saying he's slow. A lot of people are saying if he if he doesn't learn to break, he can't win the Derby or maybe even the Bluegrass. Well, he did win the Bluegrass. He still showed those guts that last eighth of a mile where he likes to, you know, get into it and dig in. And, you know, when it comes to breaking and 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 all of that stuff, you know, like I said, to me, the Derby is a race that becomes pace and trip dependent. You know, sometimes the seas part, and a, and a horse coming from way back who broke bad can just get up. You know, you just never really know what what what's going to happen. And to me, Tappet Trice has some fight in him. He likes to go that last eighth of a mile. If you put a gun to my head, eighteen days out that we are right now and said, John, you got to take one horse in the Kentucky Derby. Um, I would be torn between two, but I would probably take Tappet Trice. The other one we didn't get to yet. It's not Forte. We'll get to him soon enough. But um, I I like him a lot. And I think a big tell was, you, you know, I don't like to handicap riders and people too much and I don't really bet on anyone's opinion but my own under any circumstances but I liked when Luis Saez told Wayne Lucas 
when he was riding instant coffee, who at that point, a lot of people thought was going to be a derby favorite and a, and a major contender. So I has already said to Lucas, I can't go ride secret oath because I'm not taking a chance of losing this horse in a Tampa hmm. Bay Derby. This is my Derby horse. Uh, and Luis has options. He's a big, you know, he's a first call rider. He's got options. He was riding instant coffee at that time. And then he had already said he didn't want to lose this horse in the Derby. And here he is. So I like him a lot. Um, Ed, your take on Tappet Trice. I do too. And uh, I was in the po same position as you. I uh, had to, had not a real gun to my head, but was asked point blank uh, for a radio show yesterday. And, you know, maybe it'll change, but Tappet Trice was the horse I went with for all the reasons you said. And, and I'll just add for me, uh, the eye test, uh, which is something that I don't do a lot of. Um, I'm numbers like Dan for the most part maybe some form cycle, things like that. But occasionally something really catches your eye, bad or good, that for me is on the extreme. And I just thought that Tampa Bay Derby, that's just a race. I don't care if you're one to two or not. To win from where he was uh, really showed, like you said, fight. Uh, and he had shown it as a two-year-old based on what you said of that aqueduct race. He showed it again at three. The bluegrass was super professional. Very similar trip to what Skinner got, except he saw it out and actually won. Uh, so to me, that makes him uh, the, the play of the race at six to one. I don't think he's that much worse than Forte, and you're getting twice the price. So you think about six to one. You're pretty good with the odds. So you're, you you think Tappet Trice about six to one. Yeah, I, I could see five. Uh, you know, he is Pletcher, and like you said with Luis, that's going to take money, but he'll be a, a $12 horse minimum. Keeneland Dan thoughts. Well, I hate to put all the weight on you guys, <laughs> but I like him too. And, uh, you know, the, the positives, I love Luis Saez, especially in big dirt races. He is just, he tries so hard. He's so Good. smart. He He's not scared. He's not going to, when this horse needs to bull through two different holes on the turn, he's going to come right through them. He may knock people over, but he's coming. And so I'm not going to, it's, it's one rider that I don't get nervous about, even if he's got to come from 15. I, I, I think, you know, Luis is just, you know, him and I rad are just heads above for me at least. And uh, this horse's numbers are going in the right direction. The trip he got in the bluegrass, not many horses would have won with that trip. And and the horse in the trip in the Tampa Bay Derby was even worse. So he fought through it. He overcame it. He's four for five lifetime. Hey, he's going to have to come from back, and he's going to have to get the trip. And we all know the stories of, well, Tappet can't do this and can't do that. I, I think he's clearly with Forte, the top two horses. Um, Six to one, I'm not crazy about, but in pick fours and fives, that's fine. Uh, so I'll have Forte, I'll have Tappet Trice on my tickets, and I'll have one more horse that we'll get to in a second. And All just right. real quick on the, the trip, because uh, we talked sort of about Angel of Empire having uh, a, a similar vibe. But, I mean, I just think if they're turning for home at the quarter pole, neck and neck, who would you rather have to win the sprint to the wire? And I mean, that's a no brainer who I'd rather have. So I agree. You're taking a shorter price, but he's the better horse. I, I agree. I agree. Um, two fills. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you, Dan. In interesting horse. Um, I'm a huge Larry Ravelli fan for a long, 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 long time. I like <laughs> seeing him in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he's kind I, of I, a under the radar guy or not mainstream kind of guy, but he wins a lot of races. I, I think this could be the little ET of this year. I I think he's going to be 12 or 15 to one. His form tells me that when they turn for home, he's got a big time chance to be in the lead. That when they straighten, he's going to swoop and the speed's going to stop. And he, at some point, I think his head's going to be in front. And from there, I don't know if he'll get home because Tap Twice and Forte are going to be flying at him. But I, I, at that price, 
his 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 ruby was so impressive his number was so impressive and i love horses that got a win at churchill he beat a good field at churchill and he aired them and he won in the slop and we all know on derby day a lot of times it's wet and that just moves him up even more i love hard spuns i i think the distance is not going to be an issue it's going to be a matter of when they get to the eighth pole, can he hold off them two monsters of Fletcher? I don't know, but at 15 to one, he will be on every single pick five ticket I make. Ed? Yeah, he, uh, you know, the Oaks is a is a half fur, a furlong less than the Derby, but I could definitely foresee a secret oath nest type of situation where, uh, you know, Forte or Tappet, Trice are just left with too much to do and two fills still has something in the tank. That's what it would take to win. But I agree with Dan that the trip works out that he should get his run turning for home. And I don't love that Larry said, oh, we're just going to have one more work into the Derby. Uh, I mean, it's pra that's practically one work in three weeks at 18 to one. I really can't overthink it though, because the number from the last race is just too good to dismiss him off that one data point. It is something that, you know, personally, definitely like the traditional profile of, you know, sort of those two works into the Derby, the good one, and then the maintenance work. But Larry's a lot, a lot of fun. He's won a lot of races. And at this price, this horse is just too hard to dismiss. Uh, he's absolutely one of the ones for me. Any any concern, and I know Animal Kingdom did it, you know, but any concern that that last prep was was, was on the synthetic at all? Not I mean, I guess for me, I can't say yes because I picked the winner of the, the prep last year uh, at an even bigger price, and then Rich Strike came out of it and won. I, one thing I'll say with this horse that makes him fun, in addition to the Larry and Jareth angle, is a lot of tracks can claim him. He broke his maiden at Colonial. He won a stake at Canterbury. He was down at Fairgrounds, and then he went to Turfway to win the prep on synthetic. So it just seems like he can he can do it all on any surface or weather condition. And at eighteen to one, I'll go with that angle. But if we were talking about the eight to one wise guy horse, the synthetic would be a bigger concern. Okay, um, I, I I'm 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 kind of on the fence about him. Uh, I'll probably lean to using him because of my respect uh, for Larry Ravelli and, and, and my uncomfortableness in allowing him to beat me when he's finally in the Kentucky Derby uh, after watching him and doing, doing, doing well, betting his horses for many, many years. Uh, so I'll probably err on the side of caution and, 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 and include him. Um, especially if you guys are right about the price, if he's 15, 16, 18 to one, something like that. I think then it's almost, how can you not, hmm. you know, not include him at, at, at that price? Yeah. Uh, Lord miles, uh, big price winner last time out. Um, a lot of people say shouldn't have been that price. Uh, hmm. I couldn't get to him last time, but, uh, what's your take on him, Dan? I think he's a complete toss. I, I wouldn't even use him in the tries. Um, I, I just think he's way too slow. Um, yeah, he's a curling, but he's just on numbers. He's just so slow. Um, I, I mean, he's length slow. So, I mean, if you wanted to put him in at the bottom of a try, I guess, but, uh, no, I, I, he wouldn't be one of the keys. He wouldn't be used in the, the pick fours or fives for me. I I know he's going to be mid pack, and I think he'll just be mid pack and run one of them break sixth, run twelfth type deals, and that, that's the way I see it at least. What about you, Ed? Uh, the number came back. Rag as a number came back a little quicker than I was expecting in the wood, and for that reason, he's not a complete and total toss for me. I I don't. I shouldn't say I never use the all button, but in the Derby, I actually don't because there are horses at short prices. I definitely don't want to use one of which we'll get to in a moment. So on my ticket where if everything else goes right, 
whether vertically or in the the pick five and I'm AAAA a into the derby, he'll be one of the 14 or 15 that is in my, okay, everything else went right. Maybe I can get lucky and catch a bomb. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I agree with Dan, like he's certainly not one of the ones. Now you're going to get compensated for that. And I think of all the horses who are going to be 40 plus to one, he's one of the few that wouldn't completely shock me since he's coming off a win that wasn't utterly slow, but certainly not worth focusing your wagering on, but wouldn't completely shock me. I, I couldn't get to him in a wood memorial. I can't get to him. I can't get to him in a Kentucky Derby. Uh, he he would shock me if he if if if, if he runs one two three. I'll, I I if he runs one two three, I don't have the triple. You can count. You, you, yeah. No, I mean you you have to have a few of those along the way, yeah. but right. He's not going to be one of the ones for for. If for, if it's Tappet, Troy Skinner, Lord Miles, I'll I'll have it. Um, Derma Sotogake. Hope I said that correctly for Japan. Um, you know, it's funny about, about about Japan. I think it was two years ago. Uh, yeah, before the the Breeders' Cup was at, I don't know, Santa Anita, I mean, maybe or maybe Del Mar, but they Del they Mar. won a bunch of races. Del Mar, yeah, Del Mar. Uh, on the Breeders' Cup seminar, I said, you know, these Japanese horses are serious. Sooner or later, they're going to jump up and win one of these big races. Sure enough, they've been doing nothing but that. I have not caught one yet, okay? Um, and they beat me that year out of a huge ticket with Dunbar Road in a photo that I thought I might have won because um, I was watching from a bad angle and a friend of mine who was watching on TV calls me up and says, you got it, you got it. I'm like, are you sure? I'm not sure. He's like, I'm sure you got it. And sure enough, they put up the other number of um loves only you i want to say is a horse marsh name? lorraine okay march lorraine right i'm march sorry lorraine. loves only you won the other race march lorraine um that one still hurts uh i i can't get to this horse um mind your biscuits i don't see siren a derby winner um i know he was a talented horse i know he was uh, you, you know in my opinion anyway an overachiever uh the UAE Derby has never produced a Kentucky Derby winner. Uh, I don't think this is the first one. Uh, I'm not a believer. I'm not sold. I think he got out that day, was on cruise control against, you know, a bunch of turf horses and horses that didn't fire and, uh, you know, Japan and all the hype and everything else. Um, I hear it, but not. I'm not sold. Me neither. I'm completely against. He might be the second choice. I've heard talk wow. of that. He's certainly going to be no worse than fourth choice. And we all respect Japan. We know what they've done, not only here, but international races. To me, it's not Japan that's the issue. It's the United Arab Emirates. This race has not produced, let alone a winner. They haven't hit the board. And in some cases are just outright dreadful. Mendelssohn was terrible. Thunder Road didn't make it an eighth of a mile. And last year, the two horses, they made it an eighth of a mile, but they went in 10 and change or some nonsense. So right. this race just produces funky contenders for the Derby. They always take money. And until they show me, like Justify did with the Aristides curse, I just have to play against when they're a short price. And that's what I'm going to do here. He's a toss. Dan? I, I, I agree. I, I'm a little nervous because I don't see much pace in this race that he might make the lead. I just hope he doesn't screw the race up like those two did last year. I mean, let's face it. If they weren't in the race, they wouldn't have had that ridiculous pace. Rich Strike wasn't the one. The two best horses ran second and third. So all it did was mess the whole result up because they went, you know, a suicide pace. I'm just hoping this horse don't do that doesn't go 45 and mess the whole race up. Um, but he's probably going to be in front. I mean, I, I guess he could be second or third down the backside. I just don't, I, I, I think he's going to get way over bet. And I, I don't want him. If, it, if he goes wire to wire and beats me, you know, War Emblem did it. I'll just chuck my tickets and walk away. Right? 
you know, yeah, maybe I'll have an all ticket going again like I did last year. I mean, maybe I'll get lucky with that, even though I hate <laughs> him, he'll win and I'll have an all ticket, but uh unless I hit the all button, he's not on any ticket for mine. Now Same. let's get to a a horse that I I think is really intriguing. Um Kings Barnes. Uh do we know who's riding Kings Barnes yet? No. Nope. I'm hoping it's Jose Ortiz, but they have not announced it. Okay, so that's that's still still up in the air. Um, like I said earlier, I think Pratt made the wrong call. Um, I'll, I'll I'll start. I I like Kings Barnes. Um, I I I know he's run slow, and that's an, 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 an a knock, but he's young. He's lightly raced. He's still learning. Sometimes horses only run as fast as they have to, or run as fast as the competition is. I see plenty of upside, plenty of gas in the tank. Um, you know, justify taught not only Ed, but the rest of us that, you know, sometimes it started too. And, uh, you, you know, these, these, these things go down and, 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 and things change. And it's, it's really in fairness, such a different game today than it was back then. And even, you know, 10, 20, 15 years ago when horses really needed a lot more bottom to be serious contenders, you know, in the Derby, we used to talk about dosage index and it was, you know, for a long time, very significant. Now, you know, we're probably the only people, the people just mentioned it here. Um, a lot of people don't even know what it is. So I'm intrigued by Kings Barnes. I, I, I could never let him beat me. I think he's got, you know, a, a, a world of talent, you know, may, made a lack of experience, you know, hurt him. But, you, you know, well, what, what are my odds on Kings Barn, Ed? Uh, I think you'll get 15 to one. Yeah, see, at that price, I think, you know, for me, he's a he's a he's a huge. What, what do you guys think? I, I think he, I think you got to use him if you go say four deep in pick threes or fours fives. You know, he would be my fourth horse. Uh, more because again, there's not a lot of pace in here. He might be in front down the backside. He might be second, but he should have every opportunity to win the race if he's good enough. He should be able to avoid a lot of traffic, you know, barring getting a one hole or something. Um, and then, you know, these undefeated horses, sometimes they just, they, we don't know how good they are. Always dreaming reminds me of King's Barn a little bit where the numbers light, there's some questions, but maybe he just gets the perfect trip and nobody comes running until too late. And he's three in front of everybody in the middle of the stretch. They could happen. And at that price, I'm not taking two Pletchers and leaving out the third one probably. <laughs> You know, unless I'm really getting killed on the day and I got a cut somewhere, um, I'll probably just use all four of them and be done. Um, and that would be my four horses in the in the pick fours and fives. Ed, is he on your tickets? No, this this is where we uh, finally disagree most. Uh, I just I can't use them off off the numbers, uh, and I'm really concerned with the quality of that Louisiana Derby, which uh, you know. Todd's a Hall of Famer, and we can see why with this horse, because there's no like super big number to empty the tank. He doesn't have that two-year-old foundation, so it definitely needs to be a gradual improvement. We've gotten that. I wish Todd was the type that ran well in the Preakness, because I could absolutely see this horse being a major contender, but that's not Todd's game out of the Derby with two weeks rest. Uh, but I just I don't I don't see where he finds the race that's fast enough uh, to beat three of the ones we've already mentioned being Forte, Tappa Trice, and two fills. They've all been faster. Kings Barnes does have the pace advantage. He'll be in front of them for most of the race. Uh, but I, I just have to think one of them hunts him down. So uh, just I'm, I'm against. All right. I, I, I understood. Uh, what do you think of Ray's cane, Ed? <laughs> Uh, Ray's cane uh, would would uh, raise my ire for sure. I, I I can't use this horse for a nickel. I agree, Dan. I'm the same thing. I he would have to be in the all ticket in the bottom of the super try for me to have him. I 
he's definitely not one of my keys. And if I use 10 horses in third and fourth and tries or supers, he still wouldn't be in it. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's a toss. I mean, the two turn races in particular, they're none of them are anywhere. I agree. Uh, Rocket Can, Bill Mott. Thoughts, Dan? I mean, I love Bill Mott, but this horse don't figure it all to me. Um, I think he'll be up near the pace for half the race, and by the top of the turn, he'll be fading out of it, and horses will be flying past him on the turn, I I think. I He don't have one number to even get anywhere near anybody. Ed? Yeah, he's, he sort of built the reputation off the runner-up to four. He won the Holy Bowl, but and then the oh. runner-up to Forte, uh, which he never was ever going to beat that horse in 100 tries in that race. You mentioned how good it looked visually from where you watched it, John. Uh, and then the Arkansas Derby, which, I mean, none of us like Angel Empire, uh, and that race, which somehow was going to send four horses to the Derby starting gate, just – it doesn't stack up for me and, and all he could muster was fourth. So Bill Mott did it with country house uh, out of the Arkansas Derby and also ran finish there. And that horse was rightfully 60 to one. And that's what it would take for rocket camp. I agree. Uh, hit show. Anybody on hit shows bandwagon? I'm not. Bottom of the try maybe. Yeah. I mean, he, he had the post excuse in the wood. And I like Lord, My I mean, I was the one of us three that gave Lord Miles the, the sliverest of uh, opportunity at 40 or 50 to one. Now Hit Show is going to be half that price and got beat by him. So makes him even tougher to like, I suppose. But he, he'd be in that same category for me where if I'm right about everything else, I wouldn't want Hit Show to be the one that, that blew me out of it. But otherwise, no. Gotcha. Uh... Confidence game. He's got a little bit of a buzz with some people that I hear. Yeah, I I'm think not one of them. I think it's absence makes the heart grow fonder. And, you know, he has the one going on two months ago now. And right. one meaning the win. Uh, I I can't. I mean, these horses that prep at a mile and a 16th with the long layoff. I mean, the Tampa Bay Derby doesn't get it done. Destin was twice the horse confidence game is and he was nowhere in the derby and then ended up running very well in the belmont so maybe confidence game goes on with it after this by candy ride out of zenyatta's half sister certainly a lot to like pedigree wise but with this training pattern uh i hope he takes money because i i won't use him in anything I have a feeling he is going to take some money. I think he's got a little bit of a buzz to him. I agree. I I I I don't like him. You 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 Dan? No, I don't. The the only thing I'll say about confidence game and hit show is they do only have the two preps since January one, and the two prep horses sometimes will leap forward a few points on their numbers. So I'll I'll accept a little bit lower number with two prep horses. So the 94 buyer is not horribly low for me um, off of two preps. I could use him in the bottom of a try or super, but I don't like him. He won't be on any, you know, doubles or pick threes or fours or fives. But, you know, if I keyed two fills and, you know, the, the, the Pletchers and, you know, and he runs third, I don't, I don't want to, you know, blow my trifecta. So he – he's probably going to be on the, the bottom of that, that, those type of bets. And I'm curious, what, 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 what do you see his odds? Uh, I think I had him at 25 to one. Wow. Okay. I'm, I got and I, I mean, I think he, from a fair odd standpoint, I have a much higher than that. So he's, he's I, not I, I, at all. I, but, I agree on a fair odd standpoint higher, but I think he's going to get, I think he's going to get more play than that. More play. Yeah. We'll see. No, all right. but we'll see. 20, 25 um, to one. Verifying. Anybody, this is I, the, the, the oh, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I, I just think at the price he's going to be, the numbers look good enough that, if I went to a fifth horse in the pick four or five, which, you know, the ticket starts getting, but you never know on the undercard, they might hand you a walk in the park again, like they did with Jackie's warrior. 
when the Baffert scratched last year, Jackie Warrior couldn't lose. So, you know, they handed you that race so you could spread a little bit deeper, you know, in the Derby and, and those bets. So we don't know that yet. But if I went to a fifth horse, verifying would be it just for the fact that his number's not that far off. He's going to be in that stalking position that when they turn for home, he could do like a closing argument type deal where he just gets into a battle with somebody and they're ding dong and off of each other and, you know, might be able to somehow win a photo. He's more of an under horse for me in the tries and supers, but I could see taking a flyer on him for 50 cents and adding him to, to one of them bets uh, because he will blow up the board if he wins and being Brad Cox, you know, this could be Cox's horse that nobody talks about that could somehow be right in there again. Uh, like Mandaloon that, you know, has a little chance, not a lot, but he, to me, he's got a little chance. It reminds me of a uh, funny side a little bit that he was second to a, a horse. I really like in the final prep that got a good figure, not, not quite the number empire maker and funny side got 20 years ago, but uh I, I do feel like from a class perspective, if you like tap at Trice, verifying at four or five times the price uh, it is not one that I would want to eliminate. Uh, so like Dan, I'm not sure if he's my next up after my top, top contenders. Uh, but, you know, in my parlance, I would definitely say he's sort of that B tier uh, where he's 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 on the next level for me and the price is going to be right. So. Uh, We'll see where the post ultimately shakes out, you know, how much I use him and with who, but he's, he's one of the ones I wouldn't probably mind seeing in the mix at 20 to one. Yeah, I can, I can kind of agree with that. I think, I think where I ultimately stand with him will be decided based on the draw and the pace and you know, how I see it, you know, late right now, I would say he looks to me a cut below, um, you know, the, 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 the top tier horses, but, uh, you know, pace wise, he does, he does project at least at this point early, uh, to get a good trip and, you know, Brad Cox getting a good, a good pace set up in the Derby, um, at that price, you can't really argue against including, including, including that angle on anything. Right. Right. Uh, Sun Thunder. Sun Thunder is a horse that's, you know, for me, uh, you know, one of those horses that maybe people listening should use because I'm not going to, cause I've, I've thought he's been sitting on a, on a big race a couple of times and has not delivered. And now I'm kind of of the opinion that, you know, maybe I was just wrong. Maybe he just doesn't have that race. So if he's, is he's going to, if he delivers it in, on the, on the first Saturday in May, he's certainly going to beat me. Um, where do you stand with him Ed? Uh, definitely no interest on the win end at all. Like if that happens, it's not my day and it's his and congrats to Kenny McPeak, but I'm a little intrigued in terms of, you know, in structuring tickets and, you know, we'll see what the cost is at the dollar base, but maybe a little instilled regard slash make music for me by because not every horse is going to close. I mean, you said it with the big figure horses. Every year there's one that doesn't fire, and it seems likewise. Every year there's a looking at Lee or an instilled regard who gets right. the perfect trip and is never going to win, uh, but is running on enough at a mile and a quarter that they sneak into the exotic. And uh, instilled regard that year, it was the top three betting choices, and he was fourth, and the super paid something like 10000 for a dollar. So to me, Sun Thunder – Maybe that look because he does pass horses in every one of his races. He does run late, and I think that merits some respect underneath vertically. But a win, he's other than the one we're about to talk about next. Sun Thunder might be the least likely winner. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Use him in tries or supers because he might be that. Who's riding him? Do we know? No, either Flo or Brian. I'm going to guess and, Brian, but I don't and a, know. And Brian will come up that fence. Yeah. And he, he loves to come up that fence. And, and, you know, he learned that from Corey and and who learned it from <laughs> Calvin. 
um, that you win a lot of races and you can hit the board a lot of times at Churchill just staying on the fence. And if he does that with this horse, you know, he could be 70 to one and run third and make your whole super tries. So, yeah, I, I would use him under it for sure. I would not use him in the winter place hold. Uh, anybody on wild, wild on ice's bandwagon? No, uh, I'm shocked. And I, I'm a Brisnet guy, but I, I mean, they need to revisit that Sunland number. It is completely out of whack from every other piece of information I look at. Uh, this horse would be one of the biggest upsets in the history of, of gambling, let alone racing. Yeah. I, 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 I agree. Dan? No, I agree. I'll, I watched the Sunland Derby because my brother owns Henry Q and we were praying that Henry Q won the race, even though he'd be a hundred to one in the Derby. Um, it was a bad field and there's no, that Brisnet number I'm with that. I, I just threw my head up like what? There's no way. Um, I, I'm not using him. He, he's not on anything for me. He's a complete toss. Well, now, now uh, in, in, interesting thing on the next horse, Mage. Okay. The wise guy horse. <laughs> the wise guy horse. But here's the thing for me with Mage. Okay. Everybody knows Ramiro Restrepo, um, very active on, on, on social media. Super nice guy if you meet him in person and interact with him. Here's how you know you're old. Okay. One of the ways is when, you know, you, you watch horses run and you remember, you know, the dams and the sires running. I remember the grand dams and the grand sires, all right? This is how old I am. I'm, I was friends and used to go to the racetrack with Ramiro's father in the 70s, okay? We spent cold, frozen days at Aqueduct in the 70s. So to see now his son with a derby horse in 2023 just really makes me realize how long I've been been messing around in this in this uh, so-called sport of kings. So, uh, you know, congratulations to Ramiro and his family for just getting there um, with Mage. And uh, <clears throat> I can imagine how his dad feels because, uh, you know, they've been in the game a long, 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 long time. Um, like you said, the wise guy horse, I, I, I thought, and I, I know a lot of people didn't, I thought he ran a huge race in the Florida Derby, uh, lightly raced horse, didn't break good, made a big move, probably wasn't supposed to beat Forte that day, um, made Forte get down and dig a little bit to get up, um, I don't think they've got a rider named for him yet. I'm curious to see. Obviously, they were going to lose lose Luis, but um, you, you know, I, I think they're asking a little bit much too soon. I thought the smart play, and I get the dream of being in the Derby. I I can't say that if I was in that position, I would do it different. But to me, the smart play was put him in a confidence building race find a race for him to win and go to the Preakness as the wise guy horse winning a classic, you, 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 you know, that way as the fresh new face in the Preakness, they went for the Derby. Here they are. I, I think it's a big ask. I really do. You know, to turn the tables on Forte and some of the others, I think it's, I think it's a really big ask. What do you think? Go ahead, Ed. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And this is sort of the, quasi opposite of King's Barnes in that he had that big, brilliant debut, uh, the, the eye popping number, which he uh, got back to in the Florida Derby. Uh, and now five weeks later, the Kentucky Derby at a mile and a quarter. This, this to me is sort of that typical didn't race it to. Uh, and the reason why we never had a winner until a, a generational talent like justify and, no disrespect to Mage, but he's just not at, at that level. Uh, and this field has some some heavier hitters maybe uh, than Justifies year did, including Mage's sire, Good Magic, who was a uh, runner-up that year. So, yeah, I, I'm with you guys just too much too soon. Um, certainly one to watch and respect the talent, but he's, he's wise guy-ish. There's a lot of buzz. 
So I think the price is going to be too short. And um, other than that, uh, I I just got a message from my wife. I have to go pick up my kids. So um, there's no other horse that I'm really excited about. So I'll leave it to you guys to to wrap it up. I mentioned Skinner earlier, so he'd be the only one I'd want to pop again if he gets in. But gets in. I think uh, we'll need to get together offline because we have some strong opinions. Maybe we can share a bet or something and get lucky because we're on we're on some pretty similar horses here. All right, sounds good, Ed. Sounds thank good, you for coming Ed. on, Dan. And yeah, I'll thank you. And uh, uh, we'll be in touch, man. Thank you. All right, yeah. Uh, All righty. Send this along and we'll get it up. Thanks, guys. We'll do. Okay. Take care. Tracking trips with Pick Six King John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes, spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends, horses to watch and favorites to fade, 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. All right, Dan. It's yeah, on Mage. You and I to wrap it up. Yeah, on Mage. I, you know, I, hey, just like Sun Thunder. I know the owners of Sun Thunder. I know some of the owners of Mage. I'll be extremely happy for him if they do win. He's not going to be on any of my pick fours or fives. I'll probably put him on my tries and supers, um, but I think he'll probably split the field. Um, it's just too much too soon. Um, I think he'll be a really good horse. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt. Um, you know, Jim Dandy, Haskell, you know, on into the fall type thing. Uh, I think he'll be a really solid horse. And I think he's got a great potential to be a really nice four-year-old. Um, but today in the Derby, I I just don't see it. Probably use underneath and that's it. Uh, I, 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 I agree. I think it's, uh, you know, like like we said, a little too much too soon. I would have loved to have seen them you know, get a confidence, easy race into him and go for the Preakness. I think he would have been one to really watch under those circumstances, but you know, I, but Bla we get it. Blazing sevens. Um, I respect Chad as much as any trainer in the game. I really do. Uh, I'm surprised he's running. I don't know yet that he is. Um, he is the one I think is one of the more likely ones to defect out of here. Yeah, I don't think he'll run either. But if he does, I could see putting him third or fourth. I, it just depends on the ticket, how much it costs. But uh, I just think his numbers are too slow. He made his run. I mean, if you watch the bluegrass, he made his run. He just wasn't good enough. You know, right. the other two ran away from him. So he didn't get a bad trip. He didn't get a bad ride. He had Irad Ortiz on him. You know, the only thing I guess he could have got tired, it was only his second start. His first start was so bad. I'm not sure he got anything out of that. He's one that I wish they wouldn't run and just run back into Preakness. Okay. Um, disarm. Snuck in on Saturday with, uh, yeah, I guess a decent race in the Lexington. It wouldn't have been enough to make me want to head head to the Kentucky Derby, but it it made them want to head to the Kentucky Derby. I don't, I, you know, the point system is what it is, and I know they're trying to get it right. But how first mission cannot be in, and disarm can get in, to me tells me that the system's not right. I agree. First mission. I, I, I'm telling you, first mission was in the Derby. I would be betting on him. I agree. That's what I think of first mission. I his it, it doesn't make any sense to me to say, well, he got a couple more points in the Louisiana Derby in a bad race. He stumbled in second. 
that now that he ran third in Lexington, he gets in versus the horse that just dusted him in in a Lexington. The right. Lexington should be more than 20 points. It's it's three weeks out now, not two weeks out. When it was two weeks out, I get it. But now that they moved it to three weeks out, it should be a legitimate prep. The, and, and the field wasn't bad. It was just as good as the Wood field. You know, it was just I, as good as the Louisiana Derby field. So I think that's, that if the system screwed that up, I don't think this arm belongs in the race. There's no way he's going to get that distance. I think he's a complete toss to me. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. And I don't, I don't like him coming back in three weeks either. See, you know, that, that, that's a knock for me too. Um, reincarnate. The Bob Baffert horse currently trained by Tim Yakteen that's actually in the Derby. Uh, I think he's going to run. I believe he's going to run. Um, I've got a hard time tossing him, and I'll tell you why. Um, I thought the race he ran in Arkansas in the slop, that they bet him down to favoritism off in the Arkansas Derby, was a deceptively good race. I thought he wasn't getting a hold of the track. I thought he didn't like the slop. I thought once he kind of found his footing, he finished well. And I thought he was going to win the Arkansas Derby. I really did. Uh, and he just didn't bring it that day. He Maybe was in perfect wasn't... position and just got, he just got outrun. I mean, Yeah, you know, so I don't know that there was an excuse. And I don't know that there wasn't, but I thought so much of him that day. I thought, I, th I thought he was going to jog in the Oxford Derby. I can't let him, I can't let him beat me. You know, you, you, you know, I just, I, I, I got a hard time tossing him. I, you know, maybe not on the win end, but I got to put him in there, uh, especially if it rains, but, uh, you yeah, know, I, I'll could say, see, I, I could see putting him in the trier super, you know, yeah. Every year we say this, most they don't usually win like Rich Strike, but there's always some 40 or 50 to one that comes rolling that that hits the board. Now, I think reincarnate would be more like a closing argument type that he's going to be up on the pace and maybe he'll just keep going. Um, but I, yeah, I wouldn't put him in any bets to win, but but maybe third or fourth. I, I could put him third or fourth, just depending on the size of the ticket. All right, now this mystery horse, continue on the Japanese invitee that has no points, but he's got a he's got a, a VIP invitation. I, I don't understand this. I of course I don't I'm I'm bitter because of last year because I was getting 40 grand of Zandon one. And yeah, I still hit the pick five with some buddies, uh, which overcame that, but they screwed the whole race up last year, those two coming in. And I, I, what has he done to deserve to be in this race? Nothing to me. Race um, in Japan, that's apparently enough because it's the Japan road to the Derby, you know? I mean, hopefully he takes money and he's 12 to one. I'm not using him. And if he beats me, beats me. I just, mm -hmm. I don't see any, any race anywhere where he's good enough to win. He's going to, he's going to sit mid pack and he's going to fade out of it to me. I, I I agree. And that 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 wraps up the ones that are certainly eligible to start. Of the other ones, I know you said you liked Skinner. Um, yeah, I know. Ed, Ed kind of, kind of put me on to Skinner. Ed, Ed put me on to Skinner a little bit. So I went back and I looked at the Santa Anita Derby a little harder. He did get a three, four wide trip. Uh, he did not get a very good trip. And his numbers are going the right way. He's got a very conservative trainer and John Sheriff, you know, he's out of curling. So, you know, for, for us, you know, a 30 to one type horse, if he gets in, he'll get the distance. I think you got to put him in somewhere. Um, I'm not sure I'll put him on top anywhere, uh, but I'll have him certainly in my trifectas and my superfectas. I don't, I'm going to have to see the defections and who defects before I would ever put him on a pick four or five ticket. But right. guys well, are always he asking needs at me least for two He needs two defections to even get in. So, yeah. And, and guys are always asking me, you know, I know you like the favorite, but, but who else, who else, who else? Well, he would be a who else. Right. 
All right. Yeah. For me, I, 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 I thought, you know, and I saw the numbers too, but I, I just thought Mandarin hero was the horse I wanted coming out of the race based on the trip. I just thought he was in traffic you know, between horses, kind of had a bull's way in between horses and, you know, didn't get as comfortable a run as Skinner did on the outside, even though Skinner may have lost, lost some ground. I thought he was, you know, very eligible to go forward. So of the, you know, five horses that aren't in the race being Jace's Road, Skinner, Cyclone Mischief, Major Dude, Mandarin Hero, and King Russell, Mandarin, Mandarin Hero is the one that would catch my eye if he somehow gets yeah. in there. But he's 25th out, so I, I don't see no way of that happening, really. He'd need five five to defect, and I, I don't think we've ever seen that many pull out, you know? Yeah, we'd have to have a bunch for him to get in. But if he did get in, if Mandarin Hero did get in, you got to put him in your tries, to me. I agree. Just I because agree. he's got that 100 number, he's, he's only had two starts. He was coming at him. He did get a little bit of a rough trip. Japan horse that's not going to get bet probably. Right. You know, he's probably going to be a big price. That's the kind of Japan horse I want in my trifectas. So, you know, I, I could certainly take him in my trifectas. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was hoping was going to be the scenario after the Santa Anita Derby. And it might have been in most years because usually 40 points is enough. But this year um, turned out 45. 45 is the, is the number. So for those that don't know, um, fat ball guy racing, what do you got? Any, any, anything special for the Derby on the site that you got planned or that you got coming up? Yeah, we're going to have a special that if you, if you buy right away, you're going to get all the rest of Keeneland the first week of Derby. Um, and then you'll get the Oaks and the Derby. Then we'll have another offer that if you just want Friday and Saturday, we'll have that. And then Saturday only, We'll have that. So, uh, yeah, check us out, fatballguyracing.com. Uh, I don't want to toot our own horn too much, but we have been really hot lately. So, knock on wood, it continues. Uh, Keeneland's been really good to us so far. So, hopefully it just keeps rolling into Churchill. All right, my man. Um, I guess thank you so much for coming on the show. O always a pleasure. You've been on a bunch of times last year. Our, our, our derby show had like over 10,000 views, which is one of one of past the wire TV's top top of all time. Um, that, 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 that was pretty good for us. So, uh, hopefully we got, uh, you, you know, we got, we got the, 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 the right idea for me this year. It looks like, you know, my strategy is going to be to find value uh, and prices in the races leading up to the Derby and the pick fours and pick fives and pick six, because, um, you know, Derby days one only the two, two days a year. Now I played a pick six. Um, I play it on breeders cup Saturday and Derby day. That's it. I don't go even go after those mandatory 20 cent payouts or none of that nonsense. It's just not my game. I go after the conventional old style ones and there's really only two days left Derby. And my, my, my favorite bet is always the late, I call it the late, late, late pick four and five because so many people go Get those home. two races after the Derby, right? The two races after the Derby. I'm telling you last, last year, and I'm not, I'm not past post and everybody that was at the Bellarmine fundraiser can, can tell you this. In front of 250 people, I stood up on I Wednesday. I still heard the guy. I heard the guy cheering for Strobe. I know you, right? Right. That's who it was, Strobe. Yeah. Right? On, yeah. On, on Wednesday night, in front of 250 people, they said, "Give us one horse that's going to win this weekend." And I said, "Well, I hate to do this to you, but you need to flip all the way to the back page in the 14th race on Saturday." And 250 people were doing this. You could everybody. And I said, "Strobe can't lose." And the one guy looked up and said, but he's never run before. I said, trust me on this. I get information. It's what I do all the time. This uh -huh. horse cannot lose. So back your pick fives into the Derby and, you know, and, and into him and just take him. Don't take anybody else. So we actually had three people in the crowd that were alive in the pick four and pick five. The pick five was 110,000. The pick four was 25,000. Um, and they all hit. So, you know, me and my buddies hit 
and a couple people in the crowd hit and everybody was like going crazy afterwards. That's just always been my Wasn't favorite. Something event. you had like something at your house in the backyard was the guy. Who yeah. Was the yeah I had a party in the backyard and, yeah. and uh, it was funny because we weren't even going to make the ticket. We had already had several other tickets and, and the one guy, Huey said, well, why don't we take all in the Derby on one ticket? And I was like, well, what's that cost? And he started adding it up and, and we were, I said, I'll put in. He said, I'll put in. I said, well, go ahead and make the ticket then. What the hell? You know, so then when Rich Strike won, all of our other tickets were dead. And we're looking at each other. And I was like, oh, boy, this could be a really, really big one. You know, I, and then I saw the will pay and just started walking up into the backyard because I started getting nervous. Because the, you, I don't know if you remember, the original will pay was 127000 uh-huh. And they and uh-huh. as they walked to the gate, they scratched a fifty to one shot. Ah, okay. And Strobe was favored. Of course, so all that down. money went on right. to Strobe. So then the new payoff was one hundred and ten. So right. it's funny. Oh, afterwards, seventeen thousand. Right. Afterwards, I'm kicking the guy, going, "We got cheated out of seventeen thousand. Like, yeah. Man, enjoy the win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's the only way you can have big ones. You got to have some information somewhere in those other races. You got to lock onto a horse in one of them other races. You single them, you spread out in some of them other races and, and give yourself a chance on Derby day to get lucky. Right. You know, the, right. The, the, the turf races many, many years had 15, 20, 25 to one shots win, right. you know, cause the spring on that turf sometimes, especially at Churchill's turf, it can really get goofy. So I would recommend taking a few in that turf race, looking at the dirt sprint, maybe, you know, to zero in on a little bit. Um, and then looking those two races after there's always a firster in there from a big barn or a one star horse in there from a big barn that they're waiting. Cause they, they do do this. They wait for that race for that day. Right. Yeah. And they entered on, on purpose Derby. on yeah. that day. Because they want to be all dressed up with the ownership to get in that winter circle. Absolutely, win it. Yeah, break. And they the waited. I was told day. they waited over four weeks to put Strobe in. I believe what it. he meant on Derby Day. Yeah, no, I believe it. Um, you see that a lot on 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 certain days, and and none more so than than the, der- than the Derby. Um, yeah. All right, my man. Um, always a pleasure, and uh, good luck. Uh, yep. Heading, heading to Louisville. All right, my man. Take care right. and good luck. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Thanks. Ciao. Alrighty. By Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come out for the finish, and it's going to be tight here in the Remsen. Mo Donico. Mo Donico bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donico and early voting. And it is Mo Donico to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free formulator already uploaded to your account. 
Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Nobody does it better.